Okay, it being 5 p.m., the Lafourche Parish Council meeting of May 11, 2021 is hereby called to order. Ms. Carlene, can you please conduct roll call? Yes, sir. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Adams. Present. Mr. Grow. Here. Mr. Melvin. Here. Mr. Wendell. Here. Welcome aboard, Mr. Araby. Thank you. Here. Chairman Otan. Here. Mrs. Chasson. Here. Mr. Lorraine. Here. President Chasson. Thank you very much, Ms. Carlene. If everyone would please rise, we'll be led in the invocation by Councilman Melvin, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Adams. I'll just read something really quick from uh, 2 Chronicles uh, chapter uh, 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear, from he hear them from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Amen. 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 I'd like to welcome everyone to our meeting tonight. Uh, thank you for attending. I'd also like to remind anyone wishing to address the council to please uh, fill out a blue form up by the door and so we can make sure we recognize you during public wishing to address the council. Uh, as we go through um, ordinances, we will certainly have uh, input or allow input from the public. Um, and then once we get the resolutions, those are only discussed pretty much by the council if we don't have a blue form from you. With that said, we'll move right into item A, approval of minutes. I entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the April 27, 2021 regular session. So moved by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Adams. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas and zero nays. Item B, we don't have any, Ms. Carlene. Item C, are there any state and or federal legislative uh, people in the audience wishing to address the council? One time, two times, three times. Okay. Brings us to item D. Certificate of Recognition. Item 2, Parish President Archie Chesson III to present a Certificate of Recognition to Mr. Hudson Foray. Mr. Chesson, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. These are really exciting to do because we don't get to do them that often. Uh, but on May 16, 1921, Mr. Hudson Foray was born in Raceland to Wilts and Georgina Foray. He attended Raceland Elementary School and afterwards worked in the family fields. On February 16, 1942, he registered with the Coast Guard and served until November 28, 1945. He was stationed on the USS Columbia APA-36 during World War II's Battle of Okinawa. He has remained active in the VFW, American Legion, and the 40 and 8. Hudson married, I hope I say this right, Madge? Okay. Madge Bourgeois on December 16, 1945, and they had six children. He has been blessed with 13 grandchildren and is awaiting the arrival of his 11th great-grandchild and still enjoys being involved in all of their lives. Now, therefore, I, Archie Chasson, a parish president of Lafourche, do hereby recognize Mr. Hudson Foury in celebration of his 100th birthday. Congratulations, Mr. Hudson. Woo! Yeah, happy birthday, Mr. Forey. If anyone would like to say any words, y'all are more than welcome. Also, I know if y'all are ready to leave, y'all don't have to sit through this meeting. Um, don't feel ob obliged to stay, but happy birthday, Mr. Forey. Okay, item E, presentations and or updates. Number three, parish president to recognize Lafourche Parish Government Employee of the Month and or WOW Employee for the month of April. If you want to wait just a minute, or Yeah. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you, guys.
I just hope I look good that, that good at 100 if I make it there. All right, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, our employee of the month this month uh, is Ms. Hillary Detilia. Uh, and on her nomination, it reads, Hillary is the type of person that doesn't like the spotlight, but we're going to put her in it tonight, uh, and just keeps her head down and puts in the work necessary. Running an animal shelter is hard work and definitely tough mentally and physically. Each day presents a new challenge, but Hillary sees them instead as new opportunities. She took 2021, the year of the pandemic, and seven name storms and used it as a learning tool. She formed new partnerships with surrounding parishes and even out-of-state agencies during this difficult time. From 2019 to 2021, she was able to take the euthanasia rate down dramatically to only 9%. It is not stopping there. She continues to promote the low-cost spay and neuter program, adoptions, and the virtual pet pantry. Hillary believes in her team and the great work they are doing. As a servant leader, she would never ask anyone to do something that she is not willing to do herself. And has been said, leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure the impact lasts in their absence. So, Hillary, thank you for your work. I know you're here somewhere. Um, and thank you for everything you do for us uh, in the animal shelter and beyond. Thank you very much, and thank you, Hillary. I know we're very blessed to have such a bright individual that has stayed with the parish for such an enormous amount of time. Thank you, Hillary. Item F, legal advisor report. I think we have none. Item G, any engineers and our architect reports? All right, John. Good evening, John Plaisons with the GIS Engineering, 16878 West Main and Cutoff. Uh, the West 55th drainage project is about to be kicked off. Our pre-construction meeting is scheduled for tomorrow. So in two weeks or so, you should see the contractor on site installing that, those culverts. Very good. Anyone have any questions of John? Thank you very much. We Thank appreciate you. it. Any other architects and or engineers? Okay. Item H, public wish and address the council, public hearings, agenda items, et cetera. Ms. Carlene. Ms. Leela Lejean, if you come to the podium, Ms. Lejean, please state your name and address for the record. And please remember, you have three minutes. Hi, I'm Leela Lejean. I uh, reside at 435 Choctaw Road in Jack Bay, Louisiana. And my property is bordered by Lejean Canal. Uh, I didn't know I was speaking today, so I'm a little nervous. But I would like to address the issue of unauthorized motor vehicles on our very vulnerable levees right now. Um, I had probably in 24 hours a dozen people on my back levee, which is probably in the first eighth of my property. I own 16 and a half acres. The left side is bordered by Lejean Canal, and these vehicles are on the levees, and they turn around at Lejean Canal. Um, last week, my levee was breached uh, because it makes a dip where they're turning around. Um, I have taken pictures and videos, and uh, I can't get back there right now because the water came into my yard, so I can't go on any type of vehicle. I suppose could maybe walk there with shrimp boots or hip boots, but um, we need to address this. People do not understand the laws. They don't understand they're breaking the laws. And um, I've called the police, and unless they catch them red-handed, nothing is being done. And with the rain that we're, we're having right now, I really feel like this needs to be addressed because people are going to be losing property and homes are going to be um, in situations where they'll have big losses. Thank you, Ms. Lejean. Have you spoken to anyone with the parish? Uh, yes, as I have. Yet? I've spoken to Mr. Adams. He invited me to this meeting, and I've also spoken to... Um, Mr. I hope I'm saying it right. Dylan. Because everyone butchers my name. With the North Lafouche Parish um, oh, okay. Levy District, they're going to be putting a levy on Lejean Canal because I don't have one right now. And I'm very nervous because the water is literally level with my yard. And I've also spoken to David Ogman. They did patch that breach last week, um, as far as I could tell. But I can't get back there right now because that, that, it, it's very wet. So she's talking about it sounds like it's a parish right away from what she just said. Yeah, so we, Mr. Chairman, we, we've had 
a, a lot of issues as of late with four wheels on the levee. Some of it is because from years of, of the locks on the gates being transposed, um, the North Louisville Levee District as well as F has have rekeyed a series of locks for all the gates. Uh, we're waiting on the levee district to pull that trigger so we can issue keys out to the field offices again. So hopefully that'll curve some of it because they won't have the easy access anymore. It won't just be a random master key they could use. It'll be a hard key that nobody could duplicate without somebody's approval. Uh, but beyond that, we'll work with the sheriff's office and see if we can maybe do some extra patrols back there and see if we can try to catch them. Yes, recently um, there was an accident with four wheelers on the boat launch road with four young girls. And I, I, I just can't fathom that, you know, people are doing this. One of the pictures that I had, uh, I, I sent Mr. Adams, and I didn't realize I was taking a, a live photo, is a young lady with two babies on a, a four-wheeler riding on those levees, which to me is very dangerous. It, it's on my property. I own the property behind it and in front of it, and I hear four-wheelers at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I, I don't know what they're doing, but I'm very concerned right now not only for my own property, but they're coming through other people's property to get to my property to turn there. So last week, unfortunately, we had a breach that had to be fixed. So I, I, I really would like to hear some type of solution for this sometime soon. Thank you, Ms. Lejean. Sounds like they're going to try some new locks and, and see if that helps along with yes. the sheriff's office. Yes. And I do know uh, four or five years ago, this exact same issue was presented in front of the council, exact same issue. So and I, I know they had talked about increased barricades to make it a little more difficult. But So yes. good luck. Hopefully it will make I some differences. I thought about um, dragging a couple of trees that got hit by lightning to the levee but with my zero turn, but I can't get back there Couldn't right do. now. So. Thank you very much, Ms. Lejean. you have anyone else, Ms. Carlene? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Item E, public hearing and ordinances for ratification. I entertain a motion to open public hearing. So moved by Mr. Gross, second by Mr. Melvin. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passed with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 4, ordinance providing for a 2021 supplemental appropriation 21-013 within the 2021 operations and maintenance budget and capital outlay budget to increase the portable pumps grant awarded from the local government assistance program, LGAP, in the amount of $478.75 and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said transactions as provided for by Article 6 of the Lafouche Parish Home Rule Charter. Moved by Mr. Jones for the administration, second by Mr. Adams. Would anyone from the public like to comment on ordinance number four? One time, two time, last call for public on the first ordinance up tonight. Would anyone from the council like to discuss this ordinance? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 5, ordinance amending ordinance number 6473 that amended ordinance number 6437 which adopted the 2021 operations and maintenance budget and capital outlay budget for the Lafouche Parish Council as well as setting the salaries of unclassified employees as provided for by Article 5 of the Lafouche Parish Home Rule Charter. Moved by Ms. Chesson for the administration, second by Mr. Araby. Would anyone from the public like to comment on ordinance number 5? One time, two time, last call for public. Anyone from the council like to discuss this item? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item six, ordinance providing for a 2021 supplemental appropriation 21-014 within the 2021 operations and maintenance budget to cover the shortfall within the criminal court fund 113 in the amount of 22,000 and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said transactions as provided for by Article 6 of the Lafouche Parish Home Route Charter. Moved by Mr. Grove for the administration, second by... Mr. Araby, would anyone from the public like to comment on this? One time, two time, last call for public on this ordinance. Would anyone from the council like to discuss this? My only question, uh, Archie, is um, so they had a shortfall because of COVID last year, but did they not roll back a lot of their operations and do very little? I mean, didn't they? Their, weren't their expenses far more reduced also? So you would think that, but because everything was virtually, they actually did more stuff on paper. Um, with court dockets and stuff like that. Uh, and we, when we did the budget for the issue, we, we kind of scaled a lot of things back, not knowing what was going to happen. So we actually slashed our budget by a little bit, thinking they were going to have less. And have things, as, as things have reopened, um, they've actually pulled more out of the fund because they've had to do more stuff so much more quicker. Uh, when you look at even, even, even on ourselves with, with the rain, um, we're, I think we're in May and we're 46% of the way through our fuel budget already. So it's, it's kind of worked the same way in the court, but I will say, and I'll talk about this a little bit later in the discussions, is that 
Um, we've gotten some guidance now, and, and the money's starting to flow through from the last American Rescue Plan from the feds, that first $9.45 million we should get. Um, so we're going to cover some of this shortfall back with, with that money because that's what it's geared for. So that was my second question. If, if any of the, like, CARES Act stuff or anything yep. like that would, would help assist with this. Yeah, that's going to backfill what we've taken from the general fund. Copy that. Thank you, Archie. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'm going to move this one to a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. I now entertain a motion to close public hearing. So moved by Mr. Arby, second by Mr. Melvin. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item J, proposed ordinance is Mr. Window, you have the floor, sir. Item number seven, proposed ordinance to establish a 20 miles per hour speed limit on 60 Orpit Road, Thibodeau, Louisiana, Ward 1, District 2, Parish of Lafouche, Day, Louisiana, providing for the placement of speed limit and speed check by radar signs and providing penalties for the violations thereof. Moved by Mr. Adams. Item number eight, proposed ordinance establishing a three-way stop at the first intersection of Carriage Way and Town Way when entering from Highway 3185 and Middletown Subdivision, Thibodeau, Louisiana, Ward 1, District 3, Parish of Lafouche, Stay, Louisiana, installing the necessary stop signs and watch for children signs and providing penalties for the violations thereof. Moved by Mr. Grove. Item number nine, proposed ordinance providing for a 2021 supplemental appropriation 21-015 within the 2021 operations and maintenance budget and capital outlay budget to create a budget for the Jesse Dufran pump station and the Melodia boat launch and increase the budget for the information technology department and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said transactions as provided by Article 6 of the Lafouche Parish Home Rule Charter, moved by Mr. Araby. Item number 10, proposed ordinance levying the imposing of taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, Council on Aging, moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item number 11, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, Road District number 1, moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item number 12, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, drainage parish wide, moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item 13, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, special services district number one, moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item number 14, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche public buildings, moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item number 15, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all of the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche recreational facilities, moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item number 16, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche health unit, moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item number 17, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche criminal tax, moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item number 18, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche general alimony, moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item number 19, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, drainage, health, and library. Moved, on be, uh, moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item number 20, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, fire protection district number one. Moved by Mr. Araby on behalf of administration. Item number 21, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, Fire Protection District number 1, rolling forward, uh, moved by Mr. Araby on behalf of administration. Item number 22, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, Veterans, Veterans Memorial District Ward 10, moved by Mr. Lorraine on behalf of administration. Item number 23, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, Fire Protection District number 9, moved by Mr. Araby on behalf of administration. Item number 24, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, Recreation District number 2, moved by Mr. Araby on behalf of administration. 
Item number 25, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, Fire Protection District number 7, moved by Mr. Melvin on behalf of administration. Item number 26, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, Fire Protection District number 4, moved by Mr. Melvin on behalf of administration. Proposed item number 27, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, Library 014. Moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item number 28, proposed ordinance levying and imposing taxes for 2021 on all the properties subject to taxation in the parish of Lafouche, Library. Moved by Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Wendell. Appreciate that. Item K, resolutions. Number 29, resolution approving a cooperative endeavor agreement between the Fouche Parish Government and South Central Planning and Development Commission, SCPDC, for the fiscal year 2020-2021 membership dues and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any all relevant documents. Moved by Mr. Groff administration. Can I get a second? Second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? There being none. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 30, resolution approving an agreement between Pistiola and Associates Incorporated and Lafouche Parish Government for Engineering Services for the Golden Meadow Fishing Pier Project and authorizing the Parish President to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any and all relevant documents. Moved by Mr. Lorraine for the administration. Can I get a second? Second. All right. Second by Mr. Adams. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 31, resolution rescinding, resolution number 21096 that approved a cooperative endeavor agreement between Lafouche Parish Government, Lafouche Parish School District, and South Central Planning and Development Commission for the purpose of redistricting and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer any all relevant documents. Can someone move on my behalf, Mr. Jones, and move on my behalf of administration? Second by Mr. Adams. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 32, resolution approving a cooperative endeavor agreement between Lafouche Parish Government, the Lafouche Parish School District, and South Central Planning and Development Commission for the purpose of redistricting and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any all relevant documents. Mr. Jones, can you move again on my behalf of the administration? Second by Mr. Adams. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mr. President, you have the floor. So just to note, and I put this in the, the summary to you guys, but we rescinded the old one. The, the school board attorney uh, added some language at the very end of the document that basically says, Although the plan is to have the nine new school board districts mirror the nine council districts, none of the, neither one of the groups are bounded by each other's decisions. So if the school board makes a change to District X, we don't necessarily have to abide by that. Those districts can be changed and we're not bound by each other's decisions. So that was the, the, the big massive part of the change. Thank you. And, I, and that was discussed uh, early on. I think they just wanted it in writing. Very good. Appreciate that. Item 33, resolution authorized. Oh, I didn't vote on it because Mr. President interrupted me. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes nine yeas, zero nays. And thank you, Ms. Corleen, for being the one that caught that. You're welcome. Item 33, resolution authorizing consolidated sales tax district A of the parish of Lafourche, State of Louisiana, to proceed with the issuance of it's not to exceed $5,200,000, and once again, it states $5,200,000 of public improvement revenue bonds providing certain terms of said bonds making application to the state bond commission for approval of said bonds, appointing bond counsel, independent registered municipal advisor and underwriter placement agent, and providing for other matters in connection therewith. So moved by Mr. Adams for the administration. Can I have a second by Mr. Window? Is this the one we have the amendment? No, sir. Next one. Okay. Would anyone from the council like to discuss this item? I'd like to ask Mr. Bach if he wants to just give us the cliff notes on it. Can I make <laughs> yes, please. I yeah, that's okay, Mr. Block. Go ahead. This concerns you. Harold Block, 515 Canal Boulevard, Thibodeau, Louisiana. Michelle LeBlanc, uh, 213 Barataria Street in Lockport. Thank you. And just to give a very brief uh, summary of the two bond issues, it's the current ordinance and the next ordinance. Uh, Consolidated Sale Tax District A will issue $5,200,000 5, worth of bonds. District 2 will issue $3,600,000. 3, As I understand it, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, District A is Valentine's North 
and, and number two is Valentine South. Um, the, the ordinance states that the interest rate will be 4% or less, and actually if we went to market tomorrow or today, uh, the interest rate would be less than 1%. Now, the closing is, is scheduled for end of, Ju of July, and of course we have no way of knowing exactly what the interest rate will be then, but obviously interest rates are very, very low right now. Um, the closing is scheduled for July 29th, 2017. Um, we, we do, on District 2, have one small clerical change to make. We put in that the final payment would be made on those bonds on March 1st, 2027, and actually the date is November 1st, 2027, and I've given Ms. Carlene a revised copy of, of Section 1, which has the, this change, so I assume we'll need a, um, a motion to make that change. Yep. Um, That's for the next item. Yep. Exactly, it is yep. for the next we got item. It. We got it. Um, and Ms. Carlene will need, as you know, five original signed copies. That's, that's pretty much a summary. Does anyone have any questions? Anyone wants to ask Mr. Block any questions? Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, if there's any, no further discussion, anyone has any more to add to that? Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Motion passes, nine yeas, zero nays. Item 34, resolution authorizing road sales tax district number two of the parish of La Fouche, State of Louisiana to proceed with the issuance of its not to exceed $3,600,000, $3,600,000 of public improvement revenue bonds providing certain terms of said bonds, making application to the state bond commission for approval of said bonds, appointing bond counsel, independent registered municipal advisor and underwriter placement agent, and providing for other matters and connections therewith. So moved by Councilwoman Shesson for the administration. Can I get a second? Second by Mr. Araby. Got an Anyone like to, to discuss? Mr. Jones. You got an amendment to that. So we got uh, Mr. Jones is gonna offer an amendment. Amendment to item 34, section one, final payment, final bond payment is November 1st, 2027, instead of March 1st, 2027. So we have a motion on the floor by Councilman Jones to change on item number 34, which is what we own, that the second page of the resolution, uh, section one currently, which reads March 1st, 2027, final maturity date will now read November 1st, 2027. Is that correct, Mr. Jones? I got a second by Mr. Adams. Anyone has any discussion on the amendment? There's no discussion on the amendment. We'll move it to a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. We will now vote on the original resolution as amended. Does anyone have any discussion on the motion as amended? There being none, we'll move this to a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 35, resolution approving amendment number one to the intergovernment agreement between the state of Louisiana through the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority, CPRA, Board, and Lafourche Parish Government for the Grand Bayou Freshwater Reintroduction Project and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said amendment and any other relevant documents. Ms. Chesson will move on my behalf for the administration. Can I get a second? Second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion on item 35? I, I got just Go ahead, Mr. Grove. So they had <clears throat> one amendment that increased the project by 324,000 for new costs. And they had, so this is just, uh, I mean, what is this amendment about? I mean, just add more money to it? I mean, yeah. Mr. President, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So yeah, we, the, the state originally put in some money. We went back to the, rest, the restore council as part of our agreement. Um, so the parish, oh geez, so this goes back to probably 2014, 2015, the, the parish was allotted about $6.8 million in the environmental side of the BP funds. So we got about six, six and a half million off of the, the economic impacts, which I think we've, we've all but spent over the last seven years. This is the environmental damages side through the Restore Act. Um, so the state put up originally some money. We decided to tack on some more money so we can beef up the project. So that's what this amendment does. It applies our Restore Act dollars and redoes the agreement to show where the funding mechanisms are coming from. From Gomez or whatever. Yeah, so, so it's, the, it's yeah. not Gomez, it's the Restore Act. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. You ahead, right. Mr. Grove? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Motion passed with nine yeas, zero nays. Item L, Parish President, Department Heads, Directors, or Managers reports, presentations, and our updates. Item 36, Department of Public Works Representative to present a report. Mr. Dillon, you have the floor, sir. Uh, let the record reflect. At 17.31 hours, Mr. Adams has left the chambers. Mr. Boo. Bye, Mr. Boo. Bye. All right, let's get started. Starting in District 1, Amanda Drive, repaired washout. Copperfield Court, straightened signposts. Pond Drive, straightened signposts. District 2, Aura Street, replaced colla collapsed driveway culvert. And swept roadside ditches. Mr. Mike, this is the one you would uh, call me about. Still in District 2, the 3200 block of Choctaw Road swept roadside ditches. And Choctaw Road Bridge removed vegetation and debris. In District 3, Park Drive swept roadside ditches. Renee Drive swept roadside ditches. In District 4, St. Charles Bypass Road replaced collapsed driveway culvert. Fire Blue Bypass Road repaired edge of road. Burma Road swept roadside ditches. St. Charles Bypass Road swept roadside ditches. Over to District 5, Buy Blue Bypass Road cut damaged driveway culvert. Mary Beth Avenue swept roadside ditches. District 1 of 12 Pump Station clean trash screen. There again at District 2 of 12 Pump Station clean trash screen. Hudson Lane and Art Service Road, shred trees. Highway 652, swept drainage ditch. Bob Lolly Pine, repaired broken panels. Moving to District 6, 40 Arpin Canal, remove fallen tree. Upper Line Avenue, swept roadside ditch. Jesse Dufresne Pump Station, relocated overhead electrical line underground. And this is going to be for the installation of trash screens as well as the removal of vegetation. We can't get a big enough excavator in there because we're contending with an overhead power line. Moving to District 7, Edgar Gidry Pump Station, installed trash screens. Green Acre Street, repaired failure. Lockport Boat Launch, installed floating dock. Lockport Recreation Center, North Outfall, swept outfall. Wallace Subdivision Outfall, removed fallen trees. Moving to District 8, East 7th Street, replaced collapsed driveway culvert. LaRose Civic Center Outfall, removed collapsed culvert. West 40th Outfall, dug outfall. West 67th Street, swept roadside ditches. Douglas Drive, installed street sign. Grimial Pump Station, cleaned and painted pump station. Moving to District 9, West 112th Street, cut trees. East 85th Street, dug roadside ditches. West 130th Street, installed speed limit signs. Serenade Pump Station, cleaned and painted pump station. As well as Yankee Canal Pump Station. This is the Galliana Annex. As you can see, the building is demolished. East 176th Street, drainage improvements. And that is it. Any questions? Mr. Melvin, you have the floor. Hey, Dylan, thank you for that. I just had a few quick questions. Uh, update on Cyprian? So we, uh, we met with a lot of... Um, I guess third parties you would call it okay. on site um, looked into a few different issues we are waiting on some calcs from a third party okay. on uh, components make sure everything works right and then we're going to start the process of pulling stuff and getting it repaired okay also um, just uh, FYI I know that uh, 
I've never gotten a call in six years from Client Peter Drive because the water drains so fast in the past. I've never gotten a call except for this spring. And they said within the last year, 20, and 2020 and 2021, the water's hanging around. I mean, like, it would be gone in a half hour from the street. It's just staying and staying and staying and staying. So, again, if you would please just have them maybe look at the outfalls in the back. A uh, guy owns a pasture back there. So I know they have high ground back there, but they have outfalls. So, I, again, I don't know. I didn't walk it, but um, it just, I don't know, just seemed like something strange. I've never gotten a call in, since day one, and all of a sudden my phone's ringing from Client Peter. Uh, also, uh, you said you're working on Highway 182. Thank you. I read your email for that because uh, that's been a, a long time headache. And uh, could you please just briefly state something about Bayou Vista, about the grant, and what you're working so on? So Bayou Vista, we uh, we worked with All South Engineers to fill out a grant uh, for our pump station at the end of the street. Uh, as that as you know, that that area is tidal, and uh, they often don't drain in the summer months. You know, they only get good drainage between November and and February as the tides low. So. We did work with them. Uh, it's a Louisiana watershed initiative. It was submitted to them. We haven't heard anything back yet, but fingers crossed we'll get some good news on it. Okay. Um, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Grove. Uh, this may be a, I don't know if it's an easy question, but the, uh, the company we hired, Norris Boudreaux, I think it's called. Yes, so how do we decide if we use them or if we do it in-house or if we go out to bid? Is there... Is it like a threshold? You kind of just guess just on experience? If it's in our wheelhouse or not. You know, uh, it depends on if our equipment's down, what we have running, what we have operating. We know what we're good at. Uh, we go ahead and dig ditches, replace driveway culverts. But the beauty of us replacing driveway culverts, we call Norris and Boudreaux. They come in and pour it. So once we on site, we change these driveway culverts out, fill it with limestone, and we move on. We and send the equipment and all that. We send the list right. of these guys. They go in, they attack two or three of them at a time, schedule a truck, coordinate a truck to where they pour in six maybe six driveways at one time in an area. So um, essentially we look at what is the most feasible and effective approach for us to do it. We let them do what they're good at. We do what we're good at. Is there a way to, you know, if this acts too much, we get the work order sheets with the barns. Is there a way to know when they're working or what they did in our areas? You can maybe add it to the work order sheet. I think it would be helpful. Yeah, we can add it to the work order sheet. Or we can, as we, as we dump POs to them for projects, we could send the, the, send up a, a spreadsheet to you guys showing what they're doing. The only, the you only know, just like for, for instance, you know, if um, if I see that or if I'm aware that that's kind of stuff's going on and I get a call about some um, neighborhood curbs that need to be repaired, I'm like, man, when are they in the area? I could, it'll spark interest. Like, you know, it's not that big of a job, but if they're close, they can go and do the patching. You know what I'm saying? And see, that's it, hard it because we don't, we don't govern them, though. So, I mean, we ask them what we need them to do, but we don't schedule their work. So they have to have the assets readily available. Yeah, but I mean, they, they're their own entity. We issue a PO just like we would to anybody right, right. else. But I mean, and they're their own entity. They schedule their own people, and, and they take care of right. that work as it, as it comes in. They right. have to order materials. I'll tell you now, they're on a Milltown subdivision replacing Kerbin. That's me. Um, yep. So they, they essentially started the southern end of the parish on that East 176th Street. Uh, we had two crews for a little while working for us. One was on Lob Lolly. One started on East 176. They worked their way up. They have now gone through Raceland. Uh, bumped into Thibodeau, and then they're going to come back to race on the wrap up some jobs. So, I think it was just when they had their resume, we voted on them. And I know Terrebonne, I think the city of Thibodeau uses them. They they remind me they're just the type of people to do everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing that they wouldn't take on if you throw it at them. So I guess it would just help me to know what they actually do. To say, hey, can you get them to do it, or can we do this, or something like that. Yeah, so That's so it. like Dylan Dylan said, we're really good at digging ditches, blowing culverts, and stuff like that. <laughs> Anything really above that point is where we will we'll call Tom in them and say, hey, look, because the, the, the beauty of this maintenance contract is when you look at the, the bid docs, I mean, it's got slate stuff in there for equipment, laborers, foreman. It goes all the way down to a tool trailer, right? So we can do just about anything within their scope. It's not geared just toward roads or drainage or concrete panels. Um, we called them a couple of weeks ago to look at the, the central market because there's some rot in the back where the gutters come down. That little office area is flooding and it's rotting some stuff out. So they're, they're going to go in there and, and do some carpentry work for us too because there's some, some, some placeholders in there for that. We try to keep it, you know, the, the public bid law threshold right now is like $257,000. So anything below that, we try to get them to do before we have to go to bid with it. Um, we, we had some issues in the beginning with them moving a little slow. We, we, we lit a fire on them, had a few meetings, and um, they've kind of they've, they've sped up some work. Um, the weather's hampered them, of course, the last couple of weeks, but... Uh, we can try to figure out something. I don't know if we'll be able to tell you when they're. We might be able to tell you when they're in an area, um, but that's going to be a sketch. We can we can try to work I mean, with Tommy and see what happens. I guess the only thing is we can tell you they're in the area. I just don't know if they can 
ch switch gears and jump well, on something that's easily When you're issuing POs in our area, if you, if, you did, if you let us know that. If, you, if I knew you were issuing a PO in, in Millstone, you know, I mean, we got something on the next meeting about that same deal for some stop signs and things like that. So might be some other work that needs to be done. Can they cut the grass in the back? <laughs> Man, they, look, they can do anything. The, the issue's going to come down to money. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Lynn. The annex uh, property is cleared off. I wish you'd had a picture of that. It's completely clear. I passed today. It looks good. Uh, West 55th. I zoned out a minute. When are we starting with that? We have like eight days of school left for cutoff elementary. West 55th, uh, notice to proceed is tentatively scheduled for May 25th. Correct. And Her then uh, we plan to meet with them tomorrow Correct. to have a pre-construction conference and go there. Okay. So we're going to iron out everything tomorrow. We'll have an official notice to proceed date set tomorrow at our pre-construction meeting. Perfect. And, Thank you. And Dylan, just so you know, I guess it's been about a week ago now, John. We met with the school board. We met with Evan and, and Superintendent Martin um, to talk about this, the issues they see at, at Cutoff Elementary. Uh, and how this is going to affect some of the flooding they've had over the last couple of weeks in their parking lot, water getting into their buildings. And we talked about scheduling. So even though they're going to be still in school the month of June for the summer program they're doing, mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, in the short time it's going to take these contractors, hopefully we get a couple of weeks of dry weather, it shouldn't impact bus traffic or anything like that uh, a whole heck of a bunch. But we've had that conversation with them. Good deal. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else have anything for Dylan? I just want to say, Dylan, thanks. You no, know, last week was another one of those weeks where it was, it was a knockdown drag out and, uh, it was rough on my end, too, so just stay the course, and thank you for what you're doing. Yes, Appreciate sir. It. Thank you all. Okay, brings us to item. you have anything else? Uh, well, let's go to item in discussion. Uh, Mr. President, if you want to go ahead and lead off, if you got any follow-ups or final things. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, just as I noted, um, we had an internal meeting this morning, and while we were in the meeting, we actually got the email with um, the submission requirements for what, what I've done, the, what I've dubbed the Biden books, but it's the American Rescue Plan dollars we're going to get. Um, Renita and her staff in finance have submitted the request through the portal to actually get the money deposited into our account. Um, we have some tentative plans for what we're going to do with the money. Uh, a lot of it has to do with revenue shortfalls and, and COVID response. So while we don't have a whole lot of COVID response left, um, you know, we don't have any main testing sites or vaccine sites open. Uh, a lot of what we're going to look at is where we've seen shortfalls in the budget, i.e. royalty, uh, drainage, roads. Um, there is some new guidance that came out that actually defines what we can and can't do with the money. Um, a lot of it's geared toward water, sewer, and broadband uh, and fixing the, the, the historic issues, right, because this is a once-in-a-lifetime sort of dollars that we're going to get. Um, but underneath water, they did talk about stormwater and watersheds. So I think we're going to end up doing a lot of money with, with, within drainage, um, looking at some pump station rehabs. Um, Dylan has a plan. Um, to really look at the old parish master drainage plan from 2012 that T. Baker did. Uh, and while that one looked really, really good at the pump stations themselves, what we had to do to improve them uh, and get those things up and running, we're going to look at it more of a, as, as a watershed approach, right? Looking at the outfall canals, uh, are there ones that we can connect? Are there pump stations that we can consolidate? Uh, and then looking at how do we do that? Uh, you know, this, again, this is a once in a lifetime sort of deal where we're going to get two checks of $9.4 million that we can do a lot of work with. Uh, so I will, I will tell all of you that if you have any specific needs in your district, uh, whether they be, again, we, we, we have to look at the parameters, right? We've got to see where those budget shortfalls are uh, and come to you guys with, with, a, with a supplemental request of where we're going to put this money. But whether it be recreation, uh, whether it be roads or drainage, general okay. fund royalty, I think is where a lot of this money is going to end up. If you have any specific projects in your district, please email them to us, send them to me and Mitch and, and Dylan. And we'll evaluate them, make sure they fit in the criteria, uh, and then we can begin to really scope out you know, we this morning just sitting around a table we spent about 5.8 million dollars um so it leaves us a, a couple left um to play with so please you know send me those those areas of concern and, and we'll start to evaluate them and stick them in uh, and as you notice and, and i know mr perks here from friends of isla Fouche, we started the process uh, a wonderful announcement last week of a new boat launch coming to lafouche parish uh in melodia plantation along 308 just south of the the st charles bypass road um and talking with ryan ben Mulbrew from the isla Fouche freshwater district uh, the parish is going to help with the construction, which is what that money's for. Um, so I will make sure in the summary next week. I know Mr. Melvin sent it. We showed it to him uh, when we called him to sponsor the item. I'll make sure in, the, in next week's summary we send you guys a graphic of what that boat launch is slated to look like. Now, I will say that I think Ryan has some plans to send out an RFP to do a, a little bit more of a park type. We'll have some landscaping and stuff like that. It won't just be a rocking, you know, pillar boat launch uh, once we're done. Um, but I'll be sure to send that out to you guys so you can see it. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Does anyone have any questions of the parish president? Yeah. Mr. Grew. 
in regards to that eighteen point eight million dollars, I, I don't think I'm alone in saying this. I, the problems are drainage, you know, and and well, it starts with the rain. The rain is like unbelievable these days, you know, and it's been that way since I got elected the first term. It seems like I don't remember it raining except for a little bit every time I had a baseball game, but now it's like four, Monsoons. eight inches, and it's like so fast. So please throw the money at that and and and, and look at shovel ready projects with Dwayne and different people like that because. I know everybody's got needs of that. That that and and as well as sewage. Um, now that's why I'm wondering where we're going to get in an issue because I you know of one issue that I need and there's another one when it's a sewage problem with Tessie and when you make a call and they say y'all be flooding houses if we wouldn't be pumping rainwater and y'all need to get your drain. I mean it's it's a hot potato type thing going on. So how do we do a CEA with with somebody like Tessie? So, so there is some language in there about giving the money to third-party contractors to fix those issues. Um, we're still, because we just got it this morning, we're still digesting that. I think the one huge issue that, that we've talked a lot about is going to be easy because that's with another municipality. Okay. It's going to be easy to fix that one small piece of line. Uh, it's going to cost a couple hundred thousand dollars, but it's going to be easy to do. Um, how do we do that with a third party? It's going to be tricky. Uh, and then where do you target, right? Um, the city... Uh, of Thibodeau, Lockport, and Goulomet each get a small pot of money as well. I think the municipalities, it was up to 75% of their operating budget, so I, I haven't seen their numbers. Um, if I had to guess, the city's going to be around $4 million. Lockport, Goulomet should each get a million or two uh, somewhere in there. Um, so let us, let us digest it, and we'll see. And it'll be how do we, how do we target those areas? Do we, look at, um, do we look at the hot spots that you guys get the most calls about? I know in, in some of your areas you have more package plants than others. Some of them are newer developments. Some of them are older ones. Um, but let us let us kick that around. We'll yeah. figure out a way to if, if there's a way to do it, and, it, and then we have to go to Tessie or Stad and see if they want to participate. Sure. I don't I don't know why they wouldn't if it's free money, um, but we'll have to figure out how to how to coordinate that. Can we give an assumption and share some of their money that the water that we taking on from them? I mean, is yeah. that a valid? Hey, look, man, let's do something. We taking the all water and, and, and throwing it at Jones and T. Boo. So, and I, so I actually, I actually had a conversation with an engineer this morning when we started talking about you know looking at a at a new kind of master drainage study, right? Um, and and how does that coalesce with what Pat Forbes and OCD is doing with the statewide watershed initiative? So what those guys are doing on a state level, we'll look at that. We'll look at how Ascension Assumptions water affects Lafourche and Terrebonne. We'll look at how Livingston's water affects you know just Jefferson and St. Charles. Um, and I think that's where we parlay those dollars. I think these dollars are going to be slated toward our problems. I don't, I don't really want to, I don't say I don't want to waste the money looking at assumptions water coming down, but I don't want to waste that money if somebody else is already doing it, which the state is. They, they're doing their own modeling with FTN and, and, and their own groups. I would really like to take this first chunk of $9 million and solve our problems. If I can figure out how to get the water off of Street X for our guys, I would rather do that before I start worrying about how we count assumptions water on down to us. <clears throat> Mr. Melvin. Yeah, real quick. I want to echo what Mr. Gross said, especially in regard to getting with Dwayne with the Levy District, because I think if we can pool resources, it's a smart move. I'm sure you've probably thought of that already. I'm just, uh, we'll be getting you a letter on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Melvin. Mr. Jones. Yes, uh, that $9.2 million the first year, Mr. President. Uh, X is Waverly, digging a new ditch on Waverly, and that taking a lot of assumption water, so that really could help out getting to the pump. Uh, also, I got the email for the civil service that they're having a special meeting to appoint uh, a firm. I thought the employees were supposed to be interjecting into to the civil service manual and stuff. Yeah, me too. So we, we have, ever since that meeting, um, we have continued to carry out what I told you guys we were going to do. We have kept that employee committee together. Um, Savanya has driven that bus with those employees, and we basically have our part done. And when I say our part, I mean their part. Um, I purposely stayed away from it. We went in there, Mitch and I went in there on the first meeting and said, hey, guys, we all know there's some issues. You guys fix them, because at the end of the day, it affects you more than it affects me. Um, so we're gonna, w w what's going to happen from here is they're going to make a recommendation. They're going to have to send that upstairs to us. Uh, we're going to have to look at it and then send it to you guys for some sort of approval because at the end of the day, I have to sign the contract, and you guys have to approve that. Um, so I'm anxious to see, number one, the RFP selection process. 
um, and their score sheets and how they derived and who derived this. I, we haven't, we weren't made a, a, a privy to that. Um, although we we offered after that meeting, we sent an email over to civil service saying, "Hey, we still have this employee committee. Uh, we'd like them to be interjected in this process." And I got zero response back except for a thank you. Um, so we're going to be interested in to see what they send after the meeting tomorrow night, uh, and then we'll we'll come to you guys with some sort of recommendation. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Also, weatherization is taking application for Lafourche Parish, North Central and South Office. They have uh, applications. So, St. Mary Parish is in charge of weatherization, but we we entitled to eight homes per year, or this year anyway. So they're taking application in all three offices. If you know somebody, please send them so we can get it dead. Uh, also, Mr. Chairman, the update on the cameras at the uh, the boat launches and Abby. So Abby and Mary. Yeah. They're they're out to bid. We should get the bids back. And I'm gonna look at Mitch. I should know this, but probably the 26th is the date I have in my head uh, of May. Um, so probably the first meeting in June, you guys will be proving a low bid, and then we'll proceed with the installations. What we thought we could do mostly on state contract ended up not being the case. Uh, and working with the sheriff's office, so we actually went out to public bid with it. So it's taken us an extra 45 days. Um, so hopefully, two to three weeks after um, we approve the bids, okay. we should have some stuff up and running. All right. That's still going to include boat launches, all right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, the money that Councilman Jones had in the budget yeah. for uh, Abby and Marydale, right. and then we have Butch Hill, the Leighton Launch, and Lockport. Okay. Yeah. And the last, uh, Mr. Alvin, knock on, wave the road. We'd like to have a meeting with you, Dylan, and myself uh, one day. We'd like for you to set it up. So Yes, sir. And we'll work okay. on it tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Araby. I'd just like to echo uh, what Mr. Bo Melvin and Mike said about the money. I mean, any kind of money that we can get coming to us, we need to put it toward drainage because, you know, parish-wide, we got drainage problems throughout the whole area, and we all getting phone calls every day now with the rain that we got. So any available funds we can dedicate towards drainage, I think that's where we need to put it at. Thank you, Mr. Araby. While we're in discussion, um, I do want to um, make some appointments to uh, the Joint Steering Committee, which includes Lafouche Parish Council, Lafouche Parish School District, and South Central Planning Development Commission. I just asked uh, my neighbors here if they would serve on that committee. Um, and I sent a note, Ms. Delan, uh, if you would be so kind as to sponsor a motion um, which would simply um, appoint Mr. Arby, Mr. Melvin, Mr. Grow, and Mr. Window to this uh, joint steering committee. Um, and that's something that's going to, once they discuss, uh, that's obviously going to come back to the council for a vote. So it's not, this is not a commission, it's only a committee. Um, and it could be an appointment by simply the, the chairman, but I'd rather us just do a vote on it, um, if y'all would be so kind. So she offered up a motion, if I can get a second. Someone willing to second it? Second by Mr. Window. All in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with eight yeas, uh, zero nays, one absence, that absence being Mr. Adams. One more thing, if I can, Mr. Chairman. Um, so we, we have been, uh, Robbie, Caroline, uh, have been working really hard. We were approached by WWL uh, TV out of New Orleans about coming spotlight with LaFouche in one of their morning segments. Uh, so on May 21st uh, at the Central Market in Raceland, they will be doing their morning show and a series of interviews uh, under the pavilion starting at about 4.30 in the morning. So I would like to invite all of you guys, if you'd like to be a part of that morning show, uh, there'll be a Chick-fil-A truck serving breakfast, community coffee, will have a coffee truck out there. Um, I figured if there was food, you'd be there, Jim. Um, so I would like to invite all of you guys. I know Chairman Ote is going to be a part of it as well, uh, but come out. You'll probably end up on TV on the morning show. Uh, but um, Robbie sent me a text, and I, I forgot to write it in my notes, but he reminded me. I uh, just want to invite you guys to come out and be a part of that. Uh, it's going to be a great day. I think they're going to go to Culinary Center at Nichols, um, they're going to highlight a couple of our local businesses and, and restaurants. Uh, so it'll be a really cool day for us here in Lafourche. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Shesson. Um, I'll go ahead and wrap this up on our discussion. I'll start on the end. Mr. Lorraine, you have any final comments tonight, sir? Yeah, I just want to say that uh, we just bonded out $3.6 in Rhodes Hills Tax 2, and we had a surplus of a little over $3 million, which is fine. My question is we have a cooperative endeavor with the Greater Lafourche Port Commission. And uh, we were supposed to be paying them starting in 2020, 21, 22, 23, $1,168,750 a year, our share. 
and that's with their match, and then the state match nine million on that, and then they were able to get some federal money. Parish didn't get the federal money, they did. So my question is, are we going to be paying for this road and the bridge out of road sales tax too? Mr. Chesson, you have an answer? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, we will. So the money was budgeted uh, in the 2020 budget by the outgoing council in 19. We put it in this year's budget. The reason we haven't paid them yet is because the project hadn't started. Um, so I think they've been doing some waterline replacement work or movement work on 308. The bulk of the construction will probably start in the next couple of three weeks uh, as sea level moves in. So once those invoices start to hit, we will be. We will start to pay our one million dollar share as they request it. So you back on two twenty. Yep. You're gonna pay two twenty, twenty one, twenty two, and twenty three. Yep. So what you what you may what you may see happening is that, um, you know, if we don't get a, the the first invoice until, you know, let's say August, you know, when when they when they come calling for the money with, as the invoice start to roll in, um, we'll we'll pay that first lump of money, and it will either come back with a supplemental to, if we have to move if they came back. Again, you know, for twice in one year since we didn't pay last year, and then again in 2022 and 2023's budget, we'll have that money roped in there. That's already been calculated into uh, the road sales tax district two figures, so the surplus, and we just bond it out. will kind of be land, yeah. We yeah, can understand. do other projects and equipment with it. And also, who's going to maintain the road and the bridge? After it's done, it's, it'll be the parish's responsibility. That yeah. was negotiated long before yeah. I got here, which I'm okay with, but it was, it was done before that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had no options. I asked that question, and if they, if the feds and the state was gonna put money up, we had no choice. You know. Well, it's the same thing yeah. like the bridge in your district by the <laughs> radio station. The state says, T -bois. T -bois. "Here you go, take it." Or what you do, you take it or you leave it. That's right. It's basically, you don't have a choice. Exactly. So that's what I just wanted to make sure on that because I know that contract is getting ready to start. And, 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 and again, I would I would offer you the same thing. So I, I think I put this in the summary for the bond money. Uh, road A, $3 million off the top, goes to match the state money for the Valentine Pontoon Bridge. It leaves us $2 million, a million for equipment, a million for projects, plus or minus. Same thing for Road 2. We don't necessarily have a huge project like the, the Valentine Bridge, but Delenn, Daniel, uh, and I guess part of your district, Mr. Otan, if, if you have any specific projects you want to see us do, now's the time to say it. We're going to take about a million, a little less than a million for some equipment, and then the rest will be loved in with that, that surplus Mr. Lorraine noted. We better do some hefty projects and, and get it done. I'm still trying to get a bunch of work orders cleared, but they don't go anywhere. So. Yeah. We're working, I promise. Uh, I don't see no action. Thank you, Ms. Lorraine. Ms. Chesson. Mr. Araby? Yeah, I got a couple of things I just want to mention tonight. Uh, something that while I was an employee for the parish for a few years as a project, myself and the parish president had been working on when we were attending the uh, Central, South Central Planning Commission meetings, meeting with DOTD, and that is the overlay of Highway 1 from the Champagne and Harrison Bridge on LA-1 to Rafflin. It's going to benefit a lot, of, a lot of my constituents in District 6, but it's going to also benefit everybody in the parish that travels it. The overlay, I got the call this past week that Barrier Construction got the contract, and they're going to be starting that project probably around August or September. So Highway 1 from the bridge right up here to racing will be overlaid. Thank you, Jesus. Also, uh, I also was told on June the 9th they're going to be going out on bid for Highway 654, which is the residence of Gaines' road. So hopefully uh, we'll be seeing that thing at Blacktop pretty soon also, probably around October or so, the way they're talking, September, October. So I just want to make that announcement. And the only other thing I got is for the parish president, can you give us a little update on where we're at with the coroner's office? <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, I guess the middle part of last year hired Warmer Grew um, Flores, which I don't think it's Warmer Grew Flores now, I think it's Anyway, it's yeah. Kevin, Kevin Grow and Andy Positary. Um, they have schem some schematic, schematic work done. Um, now that they've settled down from the, the C Corps incident, uh, in the next probably week or so, we're going to meet with uh, Jamie and Danielle and Angie and go through what Andy drew up. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to go out to bid this summer and have some work started. The plan is to kind of build, move where the, the big trailer is next to the field office, 
build the new wing out for them that'll have a new autopsy room, uh, a new lobby, some, some small office space, kind of move them out of the existing space, gut it all, and then refurb that, get all the old stuff out, fix all the issues they have, and they'll kind of have kind of a brand new complex in the same spot. Uh, we never could settle on a building to repurpose, uh, mostly because all the buildings we looked at would just cost too much. Um, so we're, we're slowly getting there. Uh, we're slowly getting there on the rodeo project too. I think you and I had that conversation uh, last week. Uh, we're gonna get an update from Skipper and set up a meeting with you and the rodeo guys um, to kind of see where we are with that. And then for Mike, while I'm thinking about it, uh, I talked to Kevin, we're, we're, we're probably about two weeks out from having a meeting with them uh, about the courthouse. Uh, we did meet with somebody last week, a local guy, who I think we're going to be able to soft wash it and basically getting it looking better uh, this summer before they really kick up jury trials and before we start changing windows and stuff like that. Uh, so we're slowly getting there. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Melvin. Uh, Raceland Rodeo, Saturday night. Uh, hopefully weather holds, so I just want to let people know Saturday evening is going to be a rodeo right here. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Melvin. Mr. Grew. Okay. Um, I hope this isn't a parish-wide issue, and I was hesitant to bring this up over the last couple of meetings, but this is concerning the uh, post office in Thibodeau. Um, I'm getting a tremendous amount of calls. Um, I've talked to the post office. I've talked to uh, Garrett Graves' office in Washington. Uh, they're getting a lot of calls, too. Um, most people realize if you have the daily comment, you should get it daily. And when now that there's no route, guys, you, you get it with the mail. So it's obvious when you get four papers in a day, you miss the the mail for four days. Um, Bo and I were talking earlier. Ms. Corlin, you mail the packages, what, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning? Still don't Wednesday have my morning. package for the council meetings, you know, so we can read them online. But um, so I'm experiencing it just like the people that are calling me. Um, I reached out to a representative with Gary Graves' office yesterday, and he informed me that, you know, he's bringing it up in meetings. They're bringing it up in meetings in Washington. And it's a guy by the name of David Camp, who's a Louisiana district manager, who's having daily meetings, and you know he's well aware of. There's a lot of sickness going on over there, and people out. Um, some of the other things I've heard, talking to different mailmen that I've stopped, uh, or mail carriers, I should say, uh, they just short staffed right now. We have that in my work, and I'm sure if if you're in business, you're short staffed in a lot of ways. People just aren't willing to work, and I I don't know if that's the same thing with the post office, but. It's a major issue, and it's being addressed. Um, you know, just go to the post office. They, that's what they're telling you. Come pick it up. I mean, I, it's, it's no fun, but, uh, I mean, just with my package, I know it's six days out. And I, you know, Friday at the latest. At the latest. So I just wanted to bring it up. I mean, I'm not trying to pour salt on a wound. I just, I mean, it's up Washington. I mean, if, but I, unless they got pe people to bring it, it just don't get there. I mean, just my business, they got produce dying in the fields because it's there. Nobody's picking it, you know. So same thing with the mail. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Grove. Mr. Wendell? I had nothing, but Mr. Araby just said something that, that brought something up. We do maintain the Visitors and Welcome Center, correct, yes. under the overpass? Um, Mr. Araby just spoke about two roads in the immediate area, LA-1 and the Gange Road, that are going to be resurfaced. I'm assuming that's taking a layer off and adding some. Um, is there someone we can talk to either with state or with one of these things about making a laydown area at the interstate for storm purposes? I know Terrebonne and a little bit of Thibodeau uses BP if they can't get down LA-1-308. But I think this would be the perfect opportunity for us to lay some netting down and uh, have them dump all of that stuff there. We can spread it out, maintain it, and have an emergency contingency lay down area. Even though it's not the whole circle, just a, a small thing, just in case. So, Mr. Chairman, if Go ahead, Mr. Mr. So there, there's going to be a couple of things happening there. Councilman Paraloo, before he left, uh, in this year's budget, put some money in there for some additional concrete paving. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna be slowly working on that uh, to identify those areas where we can pave around the existing pavilion to add some more space. Um, but I think it was Councilman Otan who brought it up after the uh, the fair a couple of weekends ago. And, and Councilman Araby, uh, when he was an employee here, was really good at working with DOTD uh, to work the agreements to get us the recycle material. Uh, and before he left, he was actually able to get us the recycle material from this particular project. So our share of that material will be hauled there. Uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to grab out an area, lay down some fabric, and then build a lay down yard. Probably let the grass grow back over it so it's still hard, but we can maintain it a little bit easier. 
Uh, it'll be used as a lay down yard for energy post storm. We'll be able to use it as a point of distribution along with the fire station for water, ice, anything like that. Uh, and then it will also aid some of the civic events that happen there. And we are talking about the the westbound side, I guess, mm -hmm. next yep. to the fire next station. Next to the fire station. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for bringing it up, Mr. Window. I appreciate it. And thank you also, Mr. President, for working on that. Mr. Jones. I'm good, Mr. Chairman. I had a couple of items. Mr. LaFouche took care of it for me. All right. Good. Okay. Um, so lastly, I just said no. as, uh, as the chairman of LaFouche Parish Council, Mr. Arby. Just to add to Mr. Wendell, uh, we are getting the uh, a percentage of the recycled material on board projects. That's already been taken yep. care of with the DOTD. Yeah, that's what Mr. That's what the president said. So with that said, though, as chairman of the Fouche Parish Council, I want to welcome Mr. Araby to the council, and congratulations. Uh, look forward to working with you. Um, I also just want to mention, uh, I know he brought up the coroner's office, kind of forgot about it. I do hope, Archie, that we are planning for the future for expansion, and um, that's probably the, one of the most, um, I hate to use the word, pathetic uh, buildings that we have, and um, it's, we really have not put a lot of time and effort into uh, such an important facility. So. Um, I hope that we're really planning for, for into the future with this with this office. Um, last thing that I have, just from a personal note, is um, I do want to welcome um, my fellow Marine Corps brothers, uh, 0331 machine gunners that are going to be pouring into South Louisiana starting this Friday, flying in uh, for our big old shindig down in Cocodri. So welcome them all to South Louisiana. We're going to have a good time. With that said, I got a motion by Mr. Jones for adjournment, second by Mr. Grew, that there is no further business. The LaFouche Parish Council regular meeting on May 11, 2021 will be adjourned at 18.07 hours. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes by a vote of eight yeas, zero nays, and one absence, that absence being Mr. Adams.